Hello, buddy. My name is Eric, and today we're going to be trying out one of the most requested things. What happens if you expose obsolete versions of Linux to the internet? I'm going to use Ubuntu. Now, of course, if you did it, just you installed the ISO and exposed it to the internet, I'll tell you what would happen. Exactly nothing. It's not because it's more secure, it's actually just because it's bare bones. It's because uh, a default installation of Ubuntu client would come with no services that were accessible over the internet. So, in order to remedy this, I've installed Samda. I'm also installing Wine just on the off chance that some Samba exploit manages to load Windows malware. And then I'm also, for good measure, going to install an obsolete and insecure version of Apache, a web server, which is something that is more likely to actually be a target of Linux malware, because if you watched the wonderful uh, new video that the PC security channel just made about Linux malware, you can learn that a lot of it isn't necessarily targeted at people on desktop Linux, but servers, which can both be hijacked uh, for potentially exfiltrating data, and also as a base camp for more hacking operations, because you don't want to launch an illegal hacking operation from your own server because you can easily be caught, but if you've hacked someone else's, you're pretty much untraceable. So if you wanted to run like a reverse shell over the internet, a hacked server is great for that, as it is for mail spam. Another thing is just kind of you forget some of the things that were different on really obsolete versions of Linux. Another thing you got to do, as you can see these old release, is that if you just install this by default, apt will not work, so you have to actually use well, I would use vim and just do it with a sed command so that you can replace every instance of uh, releases with old releases, and then you have to replace, because by default you just have the US mirrors, you've got to replace that, just get rid of that. And then you end up with a URL that looks like this, and you can download your files. Here you go. So we're now online. I'm just running an nmap. And we've now got uh, plenty of insecure ports. So the browser is, I believe, or the... Apache uh, should be vulnerable, and we can actually find out what vulnerabilities we've just installed. The 2011 version of Samba is vulnerable, and it might trigger more interest from anyone running an nmap. You can actually run another command in nmap, uh, where you instead search for the service version. Uh, this one is just a bit more intrusive. And if we give it some time, it will can actually tell us what version. And this is a tool that is, of course, used uh, for good, but also for evil. And some tools, like Nessus Vulnerability Scanner, will actually combine this so that you can learn more and potentially find out, okay, what are the actual vulnerabilities here? We can go to one of these websites and we can see, okay, this Apache HTTP server, it's got a lot of really bad vulnerabilities. Now, not all of these are going to be applicable with the default installation. Ideally, we want to look at a 9.8 is pretty good, and let's see if there's any 9.9s. 9.8. Read one malicious content type response header. This can just read your memory. Ideally, we want to find if we do want to have malware installed is going to be a remote code execution vulnerability. And there is, in fact, a Metasploit module that can just instantaneously to anybody who's got Metasploit, which is a free and open source penetration testing library, can just immediately get in. I actually had the idea of installing uh, something called Damn Vulnerable Linux, uh, but I couldn't actually get it to work very well. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I just typed I just typed that in my uh, Ultra Linux terminal. As you're wondering, you cannot use apt-get on Ultra. Well, I'm sure there would be a way of installing it, but it's not a good idea. And now we should end up with Wireshark, and I think we just got it to go. Oh, okay. And these are given we have uh, no. Let's just make sure Firefox is closed. But given we have no legitimate internet services running. The Wired is starting to talk to us. Some of these could end up being just intercommunication. Of course, if I if I nmap this, you can see you can see what it looks like to get nmapped. That's why you should also, besides like ethical concerns, this is why you should never 
uh, just randomly run nmap on people is because it is an extremely visible and offensive thing to do. They, they can immediately, it's not stealthy. So that is what it looks like to get nmapped. And of course, I'm running the most obvious nmap, which is the SV option, which will actually tell you what version. Uh, most people would run the stealthier nmap, which doesn't send as much information first. And then if they saw something interesting, like an exposed SMB port, they might think, eh, I think I should run nmap again. There's also a critical uh, remote code execution vulnerability in this version of Samba. So if we don't get hacked by that, don't worry, we got plenty of options. Oh, oh, uh, looks like we just got the first uh, attempt at some sort of uh, Samba connection. Now that doesn't mean it will be successful because if they're running a more simple uh, vulnerability scanner, they might even just think that we've got a Windows system with an exposed SMB. So that may be a false alarm. Oh, okay, we're getting some requests. User anonymous. Now, I is that gonna? Okay, okay, it didn't work. Because I actually don't. I I don't know if we. Uh, I just enabled the default uh, configuration for Samba. I didn't bother setting it up. There is actually a share a share files option that we could potentially enable if we need to make this just a bit more vulnerable. Okay. <laughs> so here, here is a simple option that this is this is from 2011, not 1990. I, I actually, you know, I for all the times I have ragged on Microsoft for security mistakes, the fact that that is an easily reachable setting to enable, of course, it shouldn't ever be exposed over the internet, but that that's a very dangerous setting. So now I wonder if that's going to lead to some of these succeeding. And we can also always look at the ports, eHome NS. Okay, more attempts over the SMB port and the yeah, one server that's paying us a lot of attention seems to just be someone's dedicated server. Also, I was asked on a comment why on some of the older operating system ones I didn't use Wireshark. Uh, just to answer that, the way this setup works, it's essentially the Wireshark has to run on the client because it is directly connected to the internet. And on older operating systems, you can do it on XP, but there is no way of running Wireshark, as far as I know, on Windows 9X or 3.1. Now we've got a new uh, surge of packets that looks to be quite different. Uh, and those seem to be a lot of HTTP, which could mean that someone is trying the Apache vulnerability, or it could just be, eh, no, this actually looks like some sort of web app vulnerability finder, given it's trying to hit slash admin with an obscene number of packets. Eh, this is nothing super interesting. Okay, so we may have just had the first strange event. My Ubuntu VM suddenly locked itself, which would be odd because it's designed to do that after 30 minutes of inactivity, but there was at most one or two. So I'm thinking that may be the first uh, sign of uh, contact. So I've changed that setting to never. So if it happens again, we know that it was caused by some sort of uh, unwanted file. It would appear uh, that ultimately this is going to be another win for our old friend uh, security by obscurity. This by no means means that it is a good idea to run a 14-year-old version of Linux, especially exposed to the internet. But given that there is A, not a large enough population of such insecure distros for worms to circulate, nor a strong financial incentive, it would appear that you are likely to be spared. Now, of course, if you were running this in a real server environment and didn't just quickly grab a few random servers, you are much more likely to have a problem because if you had a full system running on this, you may discover, for example, if you had actually set this up in 2010, that your database had a critical vulnerability. And this also is only talking about vulnerabilities that would compromise the whole system. While looking at vulnerabilities that could affect this system, I noticed several that would have completely bypassed any sort of HTTP authentication. So if you were really running a web server, you would be in humongous trouble. Now, Please subscribe because what I'm going to do next is set up an insecure WordPress running on insecure Linux, and we're going to see what happens if we set up a website on an insecure server and just let it cook for a while. How long will it take to get hacked? Let me know in the comments below what your prediction is.